Here we're going to look at retained earnings and get a better understanding of what retained earnings are and clear up any misconceptions we may have of retained earnings. First off, retained earnings is earned capital and that's what the corporation earned from its investing and financing activities and any of those earnings are here in net income and net income would be the revenues minus the expenses and cost of goods sold and then that net income for each period or end of each year would flow into retained earnings. Any gain increases retained earnings, any loss reduces retained earnings. Uh, one misconception is that retained earnings are cash. That would, but it's really what we talked about here, the sales minus the expenses. Can be ca partly cash, but it's not totally cash. And then the other idea that's hard to maybe hard to understand is the fact that it's the retained earnings from when the company started. Well, that's absolutely true. But remember, this retained earnings gets reduced by any dividends paid out. So if the company paid out all its dividends, then it would have zero in retained earnings if it paid out all the dividends it had here in retain, as against retained earnings. Now, if it paid out no dividends, the retained earnings accumulates. So it does. It is a running total here of what the company has earned, less any dividends paid out. Okay. Here, let's look at our investing and financing activities under assets and liabilities here in the balance sheet and see how they affect our net income as operating activities. Okay. So first let's make a sale here of $900 on accounts. We increase accounts receivable by $900 and then we increase our sales revenue here by $900. And then through that sale we reduced inventory, we sold inventory. So we, de we decreased inventory by $600 and then we recognized it as a cost of goods sold, increasing cost of goods sold here by $600. Okay, next we received payment from our customer on this accounts receivable. So we reduce accounts receivable by $300 and we receive cash for it. So we increased cash by $300. Next, let's say we paid on our down on our accounts payable. So we reduce accounts payable by $200 and then we go in here and we paid for it in cash, so we reduced cash by $200. Next, uh, say we had to we issued a bonds payable, bring in some cash, so we increase bonds payable as a liability here for $800 and then we go here and also increase cash for $800. Next, let's look here. Let's say we made an investing, investment in property plan and equipment. So we increased that by $700 and we did it through a cash transaction here. So we reduced cash by $700. And let's say we bought some inventory. So we increase our inventory account here by $250 and we did it on, on accounts payable. So we also increased that by $250 and that would increase be a liability here. And then let's look here at uh, bonds pay payable. Say we paid a payment here on our bond, reduced it by $175 and we did it through a cash transaction here. So we reduced cash as well by $175. Okay, to summarize we looked at some basic entries here as investing activities under assets and financing activities as liabilities and then the ones that were included in net income or operating activities under net income were our revenue items uh, and our expense items cost of goods sold and expenses and then the net amount here of revenue minus expenses cost of goods sold minus expenses gets included here or in retained earnings at the end of the period. They get moved over to retained earnings. So just gives us a rough overview of what affects retained earnings. So that would be it.